Hey, Spuddy, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Old World. There is a new DLC, uh, either out or coming out, depending on when you're watching this video, and this game comes with a seal of approval, a potato seal of approval. I super recommend this game. It's a fantastic Forex game. It comes from Thorne Johnson. I was not sponsored to play this game. This game, I just love it so much that, you know, I wanted to play it. So we got commerce studies for our princess here. This is our heir. So she can become a schemer or an orator. Ski bears can adopt children, they have a lot more science, that could be a good tech follow-up, whereas orators um, are better at governing and also at religious opinions, which I think is a good direction to push this leader. So I'm going to go for the plus 18 global civics here. I can allow my daughter to become disappointed or I can allow her to marry a commoner. Marrying a commoner... This guy's a 43 year old commoner with no good skills. I'm gonna go ahead and tell him uh, to get the hell out of here. No thanks. Uh, we're gonna decline that marriage offer uh, because we have much better use for the potential matrimony of our daughter. Now we could go for a foreign marriage with Babylonia or Assyria or Egypt. We could go with a family marriage I think a foreign marriage to Babylon might be useful. We could forge pretty strong ties between ourselves and Babylon here. So I think that's what we're going to go for. Having a strong ally across the sea could be really useful. We have a lot of military units, but not a lot of orders to spend them on. So I'm probably going to be focused on scouting with my scouts to see if I can find out A, more about this land that I just took over and B, more potential land for me to use my units on. So we successfully influenced Patriarch. Tantamani, and I would like to maybe do that again if he would allow me to. So we got the marriage proposal from Babylon. We could get the scholar husband who would be good for science, a little bit of science right there, or we could go for the schemer who would also be good for science. I think we're going to go for the science guy. Oh no, 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 no. We're going to go, we're going for the schemer because he has really high wisdom, which means when he eventually does become the spouse of our nation, we will get a lot of benefits here. Yeah, we could unlock the spoked wheel, which would give us access to chariots as well as the chancellor position. We could get military drill, polis, or music. I feel like the spoked wheel is a pretty late game tech. I don't need that. I mean, the chancellor is a fantastic position. So maybe we will go for the spoked wheel and getting access to things like the chariot could be handy. It is our first early game cavalry unit. We finished work on getting a farmer in here, which is going to give us a slight boost to our science per turn. We have no citizens to spend on getting more specialists. And honestly, we have three specialists in here, which is doing pretty good for this city. I do think it's worth it for me to get a couple of more workers online to get some more stuff built. I think going up to two workers per city here is a good move. We found the Libyan desert. I will be calling this the flat desert because it is ex exceptionally flat. All right, we got some more rebels. Uh, Assyria has declared war on the Numidians, which means uh, my daughter has become deceitful, which sucks, but it's fine. It's, it's a weakness, but it's not the end of the game. Scouts have discovered a merchant caravan. Uh, we could get more charisma and some happiness in Moreau. Could become extravagant. I think I'm going to take the happiness in Moreau. Being able to down-regulate the happiness, like the discontent rather, is quite useful. I think continuing to develop an extremely powerful mining economy over here is good to do. Those surplus resources can be put towards something else. This city could probably do with a decent amount of growth. So I think I'm going to go for the shrine of Sabamakal here. And we have met the Vandals. Now uh, we could declare war on them and gain plus six legitimacy. I don't know how strong they are and how many cities they have. Looks like they're already at war with Assyria, but I think I'll just pay them for the truce. Oh yeah, they're they're pretty jammed in there. Now we could probably do something about that, um, but that's going to be like a, a sort of process that we slowly work our way towards. Right now I'm focused on exploring with my orders uh, because discovering land actually gets you some legitimacy. So that'll be useful. Okay, we're, we're getting tribally raided and... We've discovered ironworking, so we have a developing culture event in Yushara. I can gain some wisdom, which is really nice for the science. I'm going to go ahead and take the plus one wisdom. That's plus one science per turn, as well as a slight boost to the city that she's governing. I think it's time that we did convert to Kushite paganism. This should improve the relationship with this religion. Yep, because we follow the religion, they like us. Let's keep influencing people. I think it's a worthwhile action to take. And it's a question of if I want to go try to clear the Numidians or try to push through this gap and take on the Vandals. I think I'll wait until the city is is, is taken, um, is claimed and started to, starting to be built up. I do have a lot of orders to spend, so I could poke down towards the Numidian city with a um, with a militia, with those spare orders. Oh yeah, we have a, an invader in the city of Surab. Let's uh, see if we can't deal with this. Attack here, you attack there, you step there, attack. Worker needs orders. All right, so we got a new worker in the city. We have the Shrine of Academic. 
let's see if we can't get these horses online. Uh, we need to build a pasture, but that's going to be half of a order per semester, which is really helpful. I think I would like another festival in Sirorab because that will increase the happiness and increase the growth, allowing me to potentially get more specialists, which I think are the thing that I need to build right now. You could make an argument that I need another warrior and it might be time to actually get another warrior. So I will just recruit that really quick. This is a game where you want to have a rather extensive military. I think going to war with the Vandals and aligning my military in this direction will be more useful for me rather than aligning towards the Numidians. There are at least two potential cities to the west here, um, and that could be really, really valuable for me. Remember, cities are worth victory points. So the Barbarian Raid is coming here from the north. We've also got another uh, rebel over here. Our people do not wed Vandals. I think going to war with the Vandals is the play here. And we're going to send aid to Babylon so that he owes me a favor, which should put him up into the super ecstatic position. And we could potentially ask him to declare war on another player to help us out. Right, one, two, and three. That's a dead unit right there. Yeah, I'm not even going to bother finding out what the Numidians are up to. I'm just going to let them do their own thing. We did manage to get another Fisher in here. I think running the council for three turns while we wait for the city to grow so we can then get a Fisher specialist here might be worth my while because of the sheer amount of cash that it could produce for us. On the other hand, we could put three turns into something else useful, like, for example, getting a warrior or a slinger to defend the city. And I think getting the warrior to defend the city seems like a good move. I'm going to move my chariot towards my city in order to get better positioned for a defense. I'll move you there. I'm also going to move you. So we're moving some units around to try and get in position to defend against these invading barbs. There's a downside to the raid, and it's that our economy will potentially take damage and we also have to deal with raiders um, in terms of orders. One of my people have converted and we have an event from our attempt to influence. So I tried to influence the family leader of the Yam, Kaliut the Builder. I can influence him. I can make him fear me, which is probably not ideal, but it could be useful to make him step in line. I think it's good if, he, if he's terrified of me. Um, now we want to influence the leader of the Urtajet family because their happiness is causing way, a 10% rebellion chance is not good. So I'm going to try and influence them to bring that down a little bit. It means on, on average, every 10 turns, we're getting a rebel in the city, which is just a little bit too much. So I'm going to move the king consort over. I'm going to fire an attack. I'll move the chariot over slowly. Moreau has finished the settler. I think it could be good to go all the way up to a master acolyte here. It would get me an order per turn, which could be a big deal. I also think generally this city just needs a second worker. We're low on orders, but we just have to kind of divvy them out carefully. Looks like Christianity has been founded. I refuse to bow to religious demands. I want my legitimacy. Now this is perfect. We can increase the happiness level in Moreau by two. And so I'm going to pay for that. We could send dyes to Assyria as a luxury. I don't think I want to do that. I think I would much rather just get the experience. That's 10% of a level. And I will go ahead and take the plus one charisma here because it's useful. Let's go there. What's the damage looking like? If you fall back and then throw the attack, I can level you up. Swift is a pretty good ability. It means you can move the unit around more. So I'll take that. I'll move this settler out. I've got a worker over here that I'd like to do something with. This is a pretty good candidate for a farming location right here. These four tiles next to the river. I don't have a whole lot of farmland in my empire, so I think taking advantage of as much farmland as possible is actually quite important. And I do think it's important for each city to produce a little bit of farmland because settling settlers actually costs food. And most units actually use food as well as upkeep. I need to deal with this. I'm going to go ahead and buy an order. Mm, can I? If I buy two more, I think I could clean this up and then I don't have to deal with that causing even more discontent in the city. Rebellions are the kind of thing that can spiral out of control, so you do need to get them under control pretty quick. My husband is feeling a little bit sick, and we just finished the Apadana, which is fantastic. So Asher Bannerpal is disappointed with us, or Asher Urbalat, but I can allow him to become endeared to us now, which should be a huge opinion swing for us. Um, he's currently plus 22, but if I do this, he's 182 positive. We built a wonder so we get a legitimacy boost. Excellent. So he'll no longer be terrified of me, but I can influence him, which means his opinion will still stay positive, meaning it's not negative, meaning he's not having a chance to spawn rebels, which we really, really don't want. Let's kill you and then we'll get a route attack. Um, a route attack is when a cavalry unit kills a unit. It can then follow up with a second 
or even you can even chain a whole bunch of attacks together so it's really really valuable to do that i'm not sure what i should build next i think getting a trapper here for plus one order per turn could be really useful so i'm gonna go ahead and take that as a move it's also plus one science per turn which is starting to build up a nice science income in this city i should also consider building my garrison in sura ramp the garrison have i actually even unlocked it yes yes i have I need to have an act of law, which means I need to come in here and pass freedom. And by enacting freedom, I will get 24 gold per turn, plus four for every specialist, and that will just be forever. While it doesn't seem like much in terms of gold, it did pass my ambition, getting me 10 legitimacy. And if you've passed 10 ambitions, you actually win the game. This, now the fact that I've passed a law will allow me to build a garrison. And the garrison allows you to essentially trade stone per year, plus an upfront cost, for half an order, and it allows you to put a governor in charge of the city, which can massively increase the total value of the city. So I am gonna go ahead and build a gov governor so I can put someone in charge of the city. Something we're definitely going to have to consider is building a road to this new city, but I should use the Wawat family builders to do that because they have the special ability surveyor, which allows them to build multiple road ties, tiles per year, which means they're technically a little bit more order efficient and time efficient because they can just they can get the road done pretty damn quick. Looks like the Yam family has converted to Kushite paganism, which is really great. That's going to give them an even bigger opinion boost. And they're going to be lower on maintenance and they will get plus 10 uh, attack and defense strength for all of their units, which are these red units that I'm, are the majority of my military. All right, let's go ahead and settle the city on the river to the west. So I see we have two camps and a pasture here, which means this should be a hunter city in my opinion. And it's also gonna be a, probably where I build my lumber mills because I, I see a really good place for lumber mills all along here. And I believe camps give boosts to adjacent lumber mills, which is nice. So let's go ahead and found another hunter seat, uh, which will have some effects. We'll get quite a few bonuses here. Camps will give double output, for example. We will get a boost to the friendliness of the Yam family, but it will upset the other families for not having enough cities. So you have to be a little bit careful about favoring one family too much. But there's the Yam family city, El Tuena. Absolutely, this city is going to need two workers. So that's going to be what we work on immediately. We also need to kill this guy, so let's step across the river and shoot him, and then we'll take some time to heal up you. And I have a worker in the capital that is not doing anything, which I think could easily get to work on another farm. I think five farms should be enough to keep this city going, and I may eventually replace one of these farms with a granary to uh, build up the city's capabilities. I'm not at war with the Vandals, so I can kind of freely explore through their territory a little bit. This is going to be quite the battle, though, to take them on here. They are at war with Syria, so I'm going to need to deal with them pretty quick um, before Assyria does. Now, the other option is to hire them as mercenaries and then use them against Assyria, but, you know, I think I would rather take on the Vandals. It seems like a little bit easier to go after a minor character than a, than a major character. All right, we've got another tribal raid coming. My husband is feeling better, thank goodness. This is going to be a much bigger tribal raid. It looks like there's four units involved. However... Once we defeat that tribal raid, it'll be so much easier to take this camp. I think I'm going to improve the rancher specialist to get the extra half order per semester. And the one science per turn is pretty nice too. So the head of the Wawak family has died. And they did just convert to Kushite paganism, which will improve their relationship with me. And oligarch Malatason is now... I can get food in exchange for favor orders or a bireme. Ooh. I like the Byreme. The Byreme could be really useful. We also have a strong culture event in Moreau. Also, the... The better the cultural event, generally the better the rewards are. We can gain another discipline. That's becoming absurd. But I mean, like, why not? It's an absurd amount of money. Oh, okay. So I'm no longer a mysteries initiate. I'm now a mysteries leader, getting me plus two wisdom, which will significantly increase my science rate in my empire. Nice little boost to the science there. We completed the trapper in Moreau. I think there's something to be said for running another festival to force growth. By forcing growth, we can get more specialists. I don't think I need to recruit a military unit here. I guess you could make the argument to recruit a militia to defend the other city, but I would much rather just recruit an actual warrior and send him over there. So I'll recruit a warrior and then I'll do a festival, something like that. I could also one turn the warrior. You know what? I could. I have so many spare civics. I'm gonna hurry the warrior. This will make all future hurries fast, uh, more expensive, but then I can get to work on a festival and keep the city's discontent lower. And this is an important city to keep discontent low in because it's my capital. Let's also get to work on that pasture. 
I want this pasture because I want to put a specialist in it so I can grow to these tiles and start laying down some more shrines. I need to build out my urban areas in here for Moreau because Moreau does not have a lot of room to build urban improvements. I'm going to, like, if, if I go up to the Fog of War here, right, it reveals two lanes. If I take the tracker promotion, it reveals three. So what I'm going to do, undo this last move, and I'm going to take the tracker promotion on this boat so that I can explore the water more efficiently. We could build the mausoleum. We have the gold for it. The question is, where can it be placed? It could be placed on a hill out here. Um, this will get us plus two victory points. Um, all units will start with the guard promotion. Guard, I believe, being a plus 10% defense. And all of my cities will get a 40% culture boost. So I think the mausoleum here is actually a really good pickup. If I could get one of each tier of wonder, there's four tiers, right? There's the uh, basic, there's weak, uh, deve is it developing strong yeah there's weak developing strong and legendary if i could get one wonder of each tier i would actually feel pretty damn good about myself and so far i've managed that this is why i usually play with the ai slightly nerfed because they still get to a really strong place in the late game it's just i get to actually have some fun on the way there which is far more important to me than having the game be like an insane challenge uh, we have finished the garrison in Surarab, so we can assign a governor I could put my princess in charge of the city. I would much rather if she was in charge of a different city, but I also need to save up some civics because this actually costs 100 civics to do. So I don't think I can do that just yet. So rivers in this game do act as roads. That is something that is quite unique about Old World. And the good news is you can also cut trees outside of your borders to get extra wood in stockpile, which can improve your economy since I don't really have anything to build right now. I definitely need to get my sides up. That's kind of where I'm falling down at the moment. Another pack of rebels have appeared and my husband is severely ill. Looks like we got some Christian apologists. We can spread Christianity to El... Oh, it's already happened. We can gain Christian disciples, which would allow us to spread Christianity through our lands. This is if we wanted to really switch over to Christianity, but I want to do our own um, pagan religion. I'm going to persecute Christianity. Boom. Get him out of here. You're not welcome. Let's move these slingers up to get into the fight. There's our first kill. We need to focus a little bit on militaristic stuff the next couple of turns. Which sucks a little bit, but we'll, we'll be fine. We have really good orders, right? 15 per turn is looking really great. That's the sort of thing... Orders are the sort of thing that you can never have too many of, I feel like. The only way you have too many orders is you don't have enough units to spend them on. Which isn't a case of having too many orders, it's a case of not having enough units. Egypt completed the Ishtar Gate, which is pretty good. I'm now known as Amanator the Able because I have achieved all of these ambitions, which got me up to 45,000 stats, I guess. Every single thing you do will give you a little bit of stats, right? So you're building improvements, discovering landmarks, spreading your religion, training specialists, training units, promoting units, killing things. Everything you do makes you more impressive. So the larger and bigger your empire is, the easier it is to become like the great, which is the ultimate, like Alexander the Great. Uh, okay, so we've discovered Rome. Uh, we've discovered Pyface. Uh, we can make him a courtier. I don't know if I want Pyface to be a courtier. Now, I could make him my private tutor in the art of jest and gain plus one charisma, and this could lead to future events, which sounds like the most fun option. I would love to unlock Spearman right now, but I really also want to unlock Kushite Pyramids as well as Centralization and Vassalage. Um, being able to have an ambassador a government position would be really nice. So I think I might go for aristocracy. Yeah, the ambassador allows you to get peace and truces. You can also demand tribute. Centralization would give us a nice boost to our science too. Plus six per turn would be sick. So I think I'm going to go for aristocracy because of the potential science bonuses, as well as the access to the ambassador role. Looks like my daughter interrupted a meeting with another world leader. But because I am really high in charisma, I can actually get a better outcome here. She gets more charisma. She likes me more, which is a great way to improve my air stats, who already has, by the way, insanely good charisma. Let's recruit a second worker in the city of Ushara because I want to build the garrison so I can put my daughter in charge of that city so she can start making lots of money in it for the empire, not for herself, ideally. Then we'll use the chariot here to get a route attack, which we'll be able to push through into this unit. I'm going to deal with it silly old slinger down here he's been dealt with let's check the old tech tree we need to get to forestry so i think unlocking polis will be a priority here especially because lumber bills could potentially generate a lot of science for us woodcutters generate two science per turn which is unique for lumber mills it's mostly because they can be used to produce paper and like advanced goods for people's lives that's the logic at least okay i want the shrine to melul 
I don't care about the boost to adjacent farms. I more so care about getting the 7.5, 0 0.75 orders per turn. I have managed to build a pasture in the city of Moreau. Um, I think my next priority would be to get the rancher in there. I don't have access to the Kushite pyramid yet. I think I'm going to go continue to build quarries. Um, I have a tendency to build a lot of early game quarries and then stop building them. When in fact, quarries just never stop being useful, particularly as I'm moving into the next phase of the game where I'm going to start using a lot more stone as I build up the actual urban centers of my, of my empire. Let's go ahead and declare war on the vandals. This will increase the rate at which they send things to us. But the chariot backed up by Kakamani the hero who can I put in charge of the chariot, actually? Oh, I don't have enough order points. Then I regret force marching this guy because he can't actually do anything this turn. Let me redo this. Move you forward. We'll add a general. I want the counterattacks during melee leading the chariot. He'll give him a crit chance, which is great. And then I want you moving up to here. And I want you to take the hero, Karkamani the hero. Let's get started on a garrison. See these garrisons? They cost like so much stone. So much stone. Now the good news is I have a ton of gold. So the problem is gold is a fungible resource, but it is expensive to buy things. I know that sounds tautological or obvious, um, but the more you buy something, the more expensive it becomes. There's a supply and demand curve here. So if you, if, if you neglect a resource, it will get very expensive very quickly. One of our leaders got s scarred and now he's also swift. Uh, Pieface is a lovable prankster who should be kept around. Um, I'm going to imprison the person who incited violence. I don't think we should be, you know, inciting violence to take over religions here. So you're going into the dungeon and probably never to be released because I will forget about you. That's on you, though. Uh, let's go ahead and build a rancher. Two growth, one science, a little bit of uh, money and a good bit of food. It's, it's basically a better uh, farmer. We'll take a couple turns and then we can continue to develop the city. All right, we've cut down quite a few trees here. That's going to get us a nice stockpile of wood. This chariot took more damage than I had planned for. So I'm going to pop him back over here and get him healing. And I'm going to start bringing up my melee units. In particular, this one, who has the 25% combat strength against uh, tribal units. See if we can't bait these guys into a fight. Unfortunately, we can't get rid of our state religion, but we can gain plus one wisdom on our leader here. So I'm going to, or, or rather, we don't have a state religion yet, but I'm going to take that plus one thing because it's a little bit of extra science. Tank, thankfully, I am terrified. So I can make King Faustus of Rome be terrified of me gain some experience and tell him to feck off for trying to tell my, my courtiers to bow to him. They do, they do not swear fealty to you. They swear fealty to me. I'm going to take another point of wisdom because that's three signs per turn, which is going to be a huge boost. Got a lot of bonuses here. I'll pay money to improve the opinion of the Yam. Although, to be honest, their opinion is high enough. I refuse to become Christian. I'm afraid Christianity is not welcome in the Empire of Kush. So I will not be... Uh, putting an end to the persecutions, but I will lend my protection to this one bishop that you care so much about. Um, I guess I'll put Oligarch Kaliut, uh, the builder, in charge of the chancellorship. And then I'm going to send a gift to the Ertjet family, and I'll probably try to do an intercession as well to try and improve their relationship with me. I'm also going to ask them to convert to our religion. This way we can have everyone following the Kushite pagan religion. So in Ushara, we're going to get ourselves another fisher for the huge boost of culture and money. Sure, Rab got its hands on another rancher. Yeah. I think it's probably a good idea to grab myself a, a slinger for this city. Clear this out. We'll get the chariot over here. We'll get a, a route attack and we shall follow that up with an extra attack. So usually people in charge of like cavalry will level up really quickly because you can double attack on a turn, which gets you 30 XP um, compared to normally 10 to, tw 10 to 20. Looks like I have gotten old and sick, but that's okay uh, because my daughter who will be taking over is pretty good. Well, let's keep the persecutions going. People are not allowed to follow a religion that I do not condone. I keep an iron grip on my empire. Thank you. Let's take the Highlander promotion. You'll attack there. Where's my warrior? I get this warrior over here and then we'll get that kill. You're going to fall back to a hill and heal. All right, this city has two units defending it, so it's starting to look pretty well defended from a casual attack. A concerted effort will not protect it. Uh, it will not be protected from a concerted effort, rather. 
Okay, nice. We got the rancher over here. I think the thing to go for is the festival. The culture is nice as this is the growth and reduction of discontent. So we discovered more pearls over here. So this would be another fantastic trader city to continue to develop an insane production line. Also, the pearls is even better than the dyes. Like, we need to get over there ASAP. Let's go ahead and give gifts to the Earthjet family. We're going to give them dyes because they actually get a negative opinion penalty for not having dies. So not only does it improve their opinion by 40, it erases an opinion penalty too. So I think this is super worth it to do, to send them dies. I would also like to give dies to the city of Ushara itself, because the city does really, really well with luxuries in general. Um, but something I'm considering is returning the salt from the city, while it is fantastic, and giving it to El Tuina. Because if I give it to this city, its culture will develop faster, which will allow me to get a governor in here to develop the city faster too. So just things that I'm thinking about, right? These, these, are, the, these are the thoughts that I'm having. I undid some moves to try and get a better outcome in certain things next turn. Um, and I think it was worth it. I kind of wasted some actions here on this boat. I wanted to get my units here healed up a little bit better, so I redid some of the fighting. Also, a, an annoying barb came over here and, and tapped this guy. Had I known that that possibility was a possibility, I wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't have taken the actions I did. Okay, so if we want to start pushing culture, we can go for Odeons. If we want to push growth and food, we can go for administration. Also, it would give us access to the treasury, which is a handy ability. Being able to rally troops could be useful, as is the barracks. Walls will give us some happiness if the city has a military unit in it. It'll also make the city harder to take by giving it uh, extra HP. The Hamlet is a fantastic building for getting a lot of food. No, sorry, for getting a lot of gold, um, because they eventually develop into towns, which also give you growth. So I think, I think Polis is a good move for our economy. Looks like the Egyptian king died, uh, I think. We're going to go ahead and send them gifts. We have so much cash, it doesn't matter. I like how Tantamani of Surab is who this person was imprisoned by. I could refuse to release them and gain discipline. I'm going to agree to release them in the hope that that makes the Wawat family more reasonable. Sorry, Manichaeans are not welcome in my land. Yeah, I know Christians are upset. Get them out of here. Prepare the guards for the unrest. Hell yeah. Get them out. You're not welcome. Why do you think I'm persecuting you? <laughs> you thought this was a game? Thought I was just joking around. Now you guys are super not welcome. Elduin has got its two um, got its two workers. We could go for a quick acolyte. That would get the city culture and science. And I think science is something I really, really need to focus on for a little while to get myself up to a little bit of momentum. I'm building a little bit taller than my opponents. So I, I, I feel like I'm doing okay. Um, but I definitely also need to be thinking about expansion. So, I mean, on the other hand, I could also get to work on more slingers and warriors. And slingers are really effective when built from the hunter's houses. We could launch an attack on this vandal outpost if I position my ship here and anchor it. So I'm pretty sure next turn we'll be able to assault this vandal outpost and then we're in a better position to attack this one. Oh yeah, I want to build the Kushite pyramids. Plus one civic per semester per adjacent shrine. Seems like a good deal. Here's my question. If I build that there, I think that's a one time per city type deal. So you want to put it in like a savagely good spot, like right here in between three shrines. Oh man, there's goats there. You gotta be kidding me. Whatever. We'll get at least two shrines next to it. It'll be fine. The legitimacy from the pyramids is sick. All right, yeah, get me another Kushite pyramid based. Remember, legitimacy is orders. It's also opinion, but a lot of different characters. Okay, I gave a gift to the family. We managed to convert someone to our religion. Awesome. I'm now known as the Keystone. Hey. The end is near. I am going to die soon. That is unfortunate. But I, th I would say Amanator has had like a great reign. I could get 20 experience. I don't think experience matters that much right now. I think a better move would be to get the opinion boost with this with this faction who has honestly been just rebellious and unhappy for so long. All right, let's slap this guy around. Boom, he's done. We get a little bit of healing done. And now we can start moving units into the coastal flank. Oh. Babylon wants to share some spoils. Uh, I'm going to take the 80 science because that would basically finish researching Polis for me. The prophet Mani is killed. Um, so Manichaeism has been... Uh, I'm really confused as to why Egypt is persecuting that when they have like that religion's holy city. They should totally embrace that. It does feel like, not entirely, but just like a tiny smidge of a little bit, 
But this this faction was like made for me and the playstyle I really like, where you where you get like almost no, where you focus on building like a pagan religion. Like that seems super like a me thing to do. So I have died. Queen of Manator has died. Um, so we need to enact constitution and control five range units. Uh, we could go for border growth. <sighs> That's kind of cool. Oh, it could be sick to go for polytheism right now. That would allow me to build every type of shrine in every city, which would allow me to supercharge my pagan religion. Also, plus six tiles for cities is pretty cool because your cities can like border pop in really cool ways. I also really need the lumber mill. Dude, the, mona the polytheism is too cool to pass up right now. I'm gonna go for polytheism. I don't want peace with the tribe. Uh, why should we make peace with filth like you? We're gonna continue persecuted because I'm getting legitimacy from it. Uh, we're gonna choose a new governor of the capital. Oh shit, if I was in charge of the city, I could do serious work. I may just have to be in charge of the city. No, I'm better off at being in charge of a different city. We can put Pyface in charge of the city. That's that's a terrible idea. Let's just put um, Shabaka the judge. He's a young he's a young buck. He will level up. He'll get eight experience per semester. All right, let's get the chariot over there. Do a chunk of damage. Mm, maybe the chariot was a bad move. Honestly, it should be fine, especially if we stand here and be annoying. Let's build walls to lower the discontent. Let's queue up another fisher in Ushara. And I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to hurry this fisher for civics because I want a luxury to give to my capital city so that I can really, really start to power it up. Um, that's going to be one of the big goals of the next phase of the game here is like, I want my Kushite pyramids. I assume you can only build one of these per city. It doesn't say it anywhere, but I'm assuming. Do you know what they say when you assume? You make an ass out of you and me. Okay, so I need to unlock sovereignty. Which is this. I'll put a green marker on that and maybe we'll be able to get to it. It's unlikely if we're going all in on monasticism. But we can do the five range units, no problem. I could go for the border boost and try to fulfill... I think I should try to fulfill the constitution. Yeah, I'll try to go for constitution. It's worth the legitimacy. It's worth the ambition. We'll fish for it. So one of my governors became a equestrian. That's pretty good. I guess I will put an end to the persecutions. Fine. Apparently, Amancio... Amanislo, Amanislo is in love with me. That's weird. Mm. Okay, I'm going to start the ambition to enact polytheism because that is one of my goals. And I think I can get that done before she dies. She is only 28, so she should have a full, long and potentially happy life. Um, the city of Surab would love to have someone in charge of the city. Uh, Patriarch Tantamani would like this, I think. Go ahead and put him in charge of his own city. And I will put my queen in charge of this city because the sheer amount of yields here. We're talking crazy camp and net output. Boom. Which further improves these fishers. Okay, Surura built a slinger. And I think I'm going to start training acolytes. Again, because of their lovely amount of science that they produce. I'll move a warrior over here. Now, he'll take quite a bit of damage because he's not in a good tile. I could charge him forward a tile and then move a slinger over. Or I could move a warrior over and do even more bad stuff. Mm, he could. My chariot could theoretically die here. I don't want him to. So I'm going to pull him back for a heal, move my warrior over, and focus on getting in a better position in the combat for the following turns. Even if it means I have to leave builder sitting, being able to expand my empire will be really useful. Plus, I don't actually have that many useful buildings to build. Also, I'm about to get a border boost, which will, like, pop the hell out of my borders and make my empire much more solid. My husband is ill, and I'm actually kind of happy about it because he has a terrible, terrible combat ability that's tanking my military capabilities. Okay, we definitely want to unlock administration because that is a prerequisite for the targeted technology that we want in order to fail one of our other ambitions. Even though we technically should be going for spearmen right now, and I wish I was, I'm going to go for administration. I will not be offering myself as a sacrifice for my husband when I have like 10 stats. I refuse to partake in this ritual. Absolutely not. My husband is not that important. We are not keeping him alive. All right, let's retreat this warrior to heal. We can bring the chariot over to smash that guy. We can move the warrior into the forest where he'll take a lot less damage. And then we can move this slinger over to start participating in the combat. I feel like I'm starting to get a handle on the invasion over here. Let's get up another set of nets here. That's so much culture and gold. It's insane. Borders popped. Let's get these goats online. We get a nice pasture. We'll get these goats online as well with another nice pasture. This city has managed to get another fisher. It's got 51 culture per turn. That is absurd. Oh my God. That's insane. Let's build walls to give the city better happiness. Under no circumstances are we to spread other religions to our cities. Get that event out of my face. Right, let's pop this chariot back for a heal and a promotion. In fact, I might take the herbalist promotion here. 
We'll move forward with a slinger to do a bit of damage because slingers in the forest, like they can't do much damage to each other. So it doesn't really impact the battle too much to have slingers plinging away at each other. It's just a, it's just a slightly inefficient while my melee units heal up. Moreau finished building walls which will give us a plus one happiness from defending unit. I think I'm going to get the Apprentice Acolyte because I could do with a specialist. Oh, I can hurry him for cash. I have so much cash. Boom. My husband died, which is what we were looking forward to. We now control five units, which gave us a little bit of legitimacy as well as another ambition completed. So food starts to become pretty important once you start getting these urban specialists and you start upgrading them. Um, this is also a great way to continue to increase your science without having to have a lot of growth. I will go ahead and train this guy up to be an Elder Specialist and that will get me um, just a lot of science and a lot of culture and an order per turn. Orders, very valuable. Especially when I can use gold to instantaneously rush him. We could go for Monasticism. I think I would much rather pick up Forestry to get Lumber Mills. That's something I can totally swing in my direction. You're getting healed up. I'm going to move the Chariot back in, but I want him to take over this position, I think. So let's move you back to a safe location get a little heal in bring the chariot forward see if we can't do a little bit more damage chariot is stomping and in Moreau, we're gonna rush out another elder specialist this does get expensive the more you do it but i think it's worth it to rush out like urban specialists for sure we managed to finish building the mausoleum which is an insane amount of culture for us to boost up um, and we're now known as the Mason because we finished a wonder and some improvements. Awesome. I'm going to go for the legitimacy here. I don't know where Rome is and I think therefore I don't care. Uh, we got six legitimacy for building a wonder, which I'm very happy about. I would like my prince to be wise, so I'm going to focus on wisdom for him. Um, how old is my prince? He's nine, so soon he can be educated. Right, I'm going to pop over here and I'm going to go ahead and build a granary because it's going to help the city to grow. Uh, we definitely want the city of Moreau to to grow. We want a lot of pops that we can we can stuff into these positions. I'm also going to get a farmer specialist right here because that should lead to uh, yet more growth, more science, more food, more good things. Uh, the city of Asurab is also a huge potential for uh, growth. So I think a granary in here is a big brain move. There's a fantastic quarry zone down here. So I'm thinking if I pop another hamlet, and that would be, uh, you can, I think you can build in total four, but this will this would border pop to all of these tiles. And then I could start laying down some serious quarries here. They're adjacent to a ton of mountains. They'll get a, a huge amount of production, basically. That's what it comes down to, really. Nice. Another person has converted to our religion, or the wrong religion. Uh, we could get a, ooh, we could get a scout or a citizen. I guess I will take the citizen in El Tuena. It's already up to a nice developing culture, which means we can get the garrison in here, which should lead to being able to put a governor in this city. All right, this slinger is in dire straits. Let's get him onto the camels for some healing. Let's push a warrior forward. We're going to hit him. And then with the route attack, you're a little bit vulnerable, but we will follow up with the route attack. Let's grab our final fisherman for another seven culture, 80 gold and one science. That is outrageous, dude. Holy crap. Now, the city of Moreau, let's make sure we give it um, dyes. We want the happiness to come down a little bit here. And let's make sure we send dyes to the Urtjet family. I kind of forgot to do that, but it will make them happier. So I do really like the idea of my units not consuming as much resources. Like Vassalage would potentially save me a lot of money throughout the game. But centralization would give me a huge boost in my science per turn. I'm talking six science and that could eventually go up to eight. And I think centralization is the way to go. I need to pass two more laws before I can go to the next tier of um, governors. And I need to pass divine rule and polytheism. Those are my two key sort of mid game goals to actually grab, to be able to become a pagan state religion. And this will make my shrines actually give happiness, which becomes really, really insane. If we can get to there, our build has a serious mid to late game. All right, I want my prince to study wisdom. I want him to be a wise man, um, but he is old enough, I think, to start tutoring. And I would like oligarch. She has a 26% chance to give him wisdom. So that's what I'll tell her to do. I'll have her educate my son. Bring the hero in, get that kill. Shoot there, slice there. Slowly cutting our way through them. Even Pie Face has uh, converted to Kushite paganism. <laughs> All right, so we could invite Hypatia the Chaste to come be a governess. We could also 
funded School of Philosophy. Interesting. Philosophy is a pretty late game, pretty late game thing. I think getting her into my into my court would actually be pretty good because she has a decent stats for science and she could be a great tutor for my son. All right, let's keep getting these kills as we are planning on doing. Looks like the leader of Babylon has died. No big deal. We could pay tribute to them. Um, we could afford that tribute like super easily. And I could really use a husband with good training. So I'm going to take this hero. All right, I don't think we need a free worker. But I think researching rhetoric would lead us to potentially being able to get constitution. And we also have forestry now. While they are recommending that I pick up military drill for the barracks and stuff like that, I'm going to go ahead and pick up rhetoric because epics and exploration is another law that I can pass, which gets me up to three laws, which in turn should lead to being able to build my unique unit once I have my strongholds online. Let's go ahead and pre-prep out a settler. Take a little bit of time to build it. Although I am working on granaries, which is giving me growth, which is used to train settlers. So not, not, not terrible at the moment. P good progress is being made. All right, we'll kill here. Then I want you to get that kill. Slash here, we'll kill here. We should have this camp soon. Okay, we have a truce with the Numidians. We converted more people to Kushite paganism. People are improving. I'm now known as the architect, which is exciting. Uh, my son, I will be taking this monkey and getting rid of it as soon as possible. The pet monkey is like the chaos option in every game of old world. Also, I'm going to snipe this camp and loot everything. Although then again, I could also get discipline. I think I'll take the discipline. But yeah, I just yoinked this city site. I have a settler in production. I'm on the verge of yoinking this city site. Execute the prisoners. We'll get more discipline. Excellent. I would say we're making really, really nice project. We just captured two city sites in a single turn. That is a huge turn up for the books. It's a huge turn down for what? Um, I think Hypatia would be a fantastic leader for the city of El Tuina because once we start focusing on building the lumber mills and getting the lumber mill specialists, the amount of science the city will produce will be amazing. So I'm going to plop her right in there. It's going to be definitely the focus of this city. I feel like this difficulty level that I have the game on feels really nice. It doesn't feel too heavy. It doesn't feel too light. It feels quite chill. It, I feel like I've set the difficulty level around about where I'm capable. Like, I'm just barely able to snipe some stuff from the AI, but just barely, right? Like, I'm not completely dominating them like I would on lower difficulties. And I'm actually able to get some buildings, which I wouldn't be able to do in um, if it were harder. Something I always struggled with. Now, it's time we started getting our lumber mills. We need wood income. Uh, wood becomes a very important mid to late game resource. A lot of things start using wood. So the more lumber mills you can get down, uh, the earlier, the better. My prince did become educated, which is huge for when he eventually takes over. Let's go ahead and research sovereignty. That way we can pass constitution and fulfill an ambition. I think paying Assyria 87 gold per turn for 40 turns to get a city is super worth it, considering how powerful our economy is right now. We have two choices here. We can go for exploration if we want to go ahead and cross the rivers and stuff like that. Or we can go for epics, which gives us culture every time we kill a military unit. I think this could be quite worth it. This will improve the opinions of the hunters, but I mean, the hunters are extremely happy with me right now. It all matters. I don't think I need scouts to move on the water. I have a boat already. So I'm going to go for epics, which should I find myself fighting any more, you know, barbarian units will benefit me quite well. Ooh, we could get the cult of the fallen goddess in Moreau. It's another plus two happiness. Oh, the temple was destroyed. Oh, no, no, no. It, this is a new cult. Um, I think we love paganism. So let's build the cult of the fallen goddess. Let's go. Hell yeah. A little bit of growth, a little bit of happiness. The city is now almost neutral on happiness, which is going to be a big me meme for us. Um, but I'm going to call that the end of the episode. I think we've made pretty good progress. Uh, we do still need to appoint an ambassador. We've got so much we need to do. And we're up to an insane amount of orders, which means we can probably employ like two to three times as many workers, like a ridiculous number. And our science is getting up to a really nice number. Oh yeah, we're, we're starting to hit a, a mid-game stride. We're about a, what, 40% of the way to a victory in terms of victory points. Yeah, I'm going to call that there. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.